Okay, so in this video, I wanted to look at uh, derivatives of inverse trig functions, and uh, I wanted to do a contrast between how I generally do them myself, where I prefer to use logic and kind of build a triangle and think my way through it, and versus like if you take the time to have memorized some of the trig identities that are involved in these functions. So um, we'll jump into there and uh, see what we can do. I've just a couple couple quick questions. So I don't want to take very long for this. Uh, I was going to do a total of four. So let's take a look at what we got. So I wanted to start with a little bit of a compare and contrast story. So let's suppose that somebody had, um, let me write inverse trig derivatives. Okay, so let's suppose that we were faced with this question right here. And on a test, we're like, oh no, I cannot remember what that special formula is. So what I want to do is do this problem using um, logic and then once using the formulas. And then from here on out, I'm just going to use straight formulas, okay? So right off the bat, if we have an inverse function, it's very similar to what we did with logarithms. A lot of times you just get rid of the logarithm. If we don't like inverse trig or you have a problem remembering the inverse trig, just get rid of the inverse trig. So we start off here. Now, that leads us to a little bit of a story. And that story tells me that if you take a cotangent of y, that makes y, again, the angle. The definition of a cotangent is actually the reciprocal of the tangent. So instead of opposite over adjacent, it is adjacent over opposite. Now, I can utilize a quick Pythagorean theorem argument and think of a squared plus b squared being equal to c squared. So a squared would be e to the 2x, b squared would be 16x squared, and then of course, I don't want c squared, I want c right there. So this would be the triangle that is being described by the story right here, where the cotangent of it would be e to the x over 4x. Now, we haven't done any calc yet, but now it's time to do that. So remember the derivative of a cotangent. The tangent was secant squared, so the cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So the derivative of a cotangent is negative cosecant squared of y times dy dx. Now, we come over to this other one, and we have a little bit more work to do. We have a low d high. Here's my low d high minus my high d low and I square the bottom and away we go. Um, I usually, if I can simplify things ever so slightly, I would. I notice that the everything here has a four in it, so I could of course take the four out and I'd have x e to the x minus e to the x over four x squared. And that's probably sufficient. I could factor an e to the x out as well, but it's probably fine to do it as we have. So to finish up my story, um, I have x minus 1 times e to the x over 4x squared. I need this negative cosecant squared to come to the other side, so I'm going to multiply both sides by a sine squared of y. So keep in mind, if you multiply by a negative sine squared on both sides, a sine squared and a cosecant squared are inverses of each other, so they would cancel out. And then all I have left to do to complete and finish my story <clears throat> is look above at the question phrase and decide what is the sine squared. Now remember sine squared is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be opposite over hypotenuse again, squared. So a, a nice thing that just happened is I still have my x minus 1, 4x squared, this is actually 16x squared, divided by 4x squared. And so 16x squared, I'm going to write it that way so we can see it a little bit better. Those would cancel to leave a simple number 4. And then uh, I still, I guess if I take the square root of this guy and I square it, we're just going to get e to the 2x plus 16x squared. And so that's the way I generally like to do these problems. But compare and contrast, if we actually wanted to do a few problems, and I have three of them sitting right here ready to go, but 
I wanted to take those derivatives and I wanted to go at them a little bit more rapidly. The first thing that I would do is I would just basically look up, okay, so what is the derivative of the tangent inverse? And I have that written right here. A tangent inverse of any function of u. Now keep in mind, this is a, this is a chain rule. u is a function of x. Now this is one of those that we're gonna have on our cards to memorize, to help us facilitate that going faster. It is the derivative of the inside over one plus whatever that inside is squared. So you can see that this would actually be substantially faster if instead of building those things every single time, we just had them memorized. So the derivative of this is one plus whatever u is squared times the derivative of whatever that inside piece is. And the derivative of that inside piece would be 12x cubed. And notice that that was a much, much faster process because again, I'm not building the triangle, but we would get exactly the same answer if we were to do it my other way. Now, this one's a little bit weird. The derivative of a secant, so again, here's y prime, I should do that, y prime equals that. So my secant inverse, the first thing is, is on the top, the derivative of the inside piece goes in there. So I'm taking the derivative of the secant of the square root of all that stuff. So it would be one half x minus four to the minus one half times the derivative of what's inside to the inside, which is just one. Okay, so I now have the u prime done. Then it says over the absolute value of u, which would be this. Now, interestingly enough, in this case, putting an absolute value on that square root is irrelevant. I could put it on there, but it wouldn't matter. And then I have to take the square root of whatever this u is squared, which of course, if I square that, I would get x minus four, because that was u squared, and then minus one. So I guess if we were cleaning that up just a little teeny bit, we could say that, uh, oh, this is a square root in the bottom times this square root in the bottom, which is just x minus four. This is a square root of x minus five. Um, we still have the two from this one half that is sitting right here. So notice this two right here popped to the bottom. I actually combined this root, which is supposed to be in the bottom with this root that is already in the bottom to produce that little piece. And then all I did is simplify that other thing and there's nothing left on top. So I guess we're talking about a one. I actually didn't mean that problem to come out quite that clear with all of those little things, but that's what happened. Okay, <clears throat> now let's go and look at one last one and we'll call it a day. So, Taking a derivative of this, now this is a big chain rule, I, and I did this on purpose to, to put two things in. Number one, you want to notice that you have some big ugly thing to the fourth power. Well, we already know that four, um, that anything to the fourth power's derivative would be that same thing, whatever the heck that thing is, to the third power. This is chain rule, so keep in mind, we just took care of the part that is the four. <clears throat> now we need to go in here and we need to take the part that is the arc sine. So keep in mind when you deal with an arc sine, that's the same thing as saying sine with a little minus one. So that's just different verbiage for the same thing. Now again, the arc sine I have right here, we're gonna do a, be multiplying this by one, over the square root of one minus whatever your u is that has been squared. And my u is e to the x minus sine x. So the interior function is e to the x minus sine x. So that is my what we would call u that is being squared. And then the only thing that I have left to do is the u prime which is this portion right here. And I think we are, we've done that enough to know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of negative sine is a negative cosine. So this particular problem would have been almost impossible for me to do using my other version. I, I don't think I could make a triangle out of this problem and actually come up with a easy, successful solution. So there we go. That's just using those memorized facts 
which of course, if we have them done, is going to make our life a lot easier. I will see you back in class soon. Bye-bye.